I love the nickname because I feel like we all have a gift. You have one, I have one, everyone has one. But we have to face those fears as well and understand that we're only as good as the tests. Are we truly battle tested? So it's like, what makes a person so smart? What makes a person, Shaquille O'Neal hit a lot of free throws by himself. But when the lights were on, maybe not as much. So you can't say like, oh yeah, I'm, this guy, he's so badass. It's like, nah, man, that gift is only as good as it's tested. And it's been forged and fortified over and over and over again. For me, it takes on a greater meaning than just like, oh yeah, he thinks he's God's gift to this. And it's like, oh no, I, I can be if I pour into myself and be willing to pour into others. So 17 years old, you do this interview and somebody asks you whether or not you're going to make it into the NBA. And you said, I don't know about the NBA, I know that I'm going <laughs> yeah. to be pro at something. Where, at the age of 17, playing basketball as a five foot nine, 180 pound guy, where do you get the self-belief from? It's not like you came from some privileged background. It's not like you had things, whatever the opposite of a silver platter is, it was kind of that scenario. How do you develop self-belief at an age where you only have minimal evidence that something's gonna come of it? Well, understanding who is pouring into you. Mom, stepfather, even my father poured into me. The coaches that I had poured into me. I had friends that were highly competitive that forced me, and that's a key word, is competitive nature. I grew up in Seattle, Washington, so you gotta think, at that time, I was born in 79, so just in my neighborhood, we had guys that are now pros in something. I was neighbors to all these different athletes. So my whole journey was about finding who I am and not being afraid to be who I am who I'm supposed to be and having that killer instinct. So I had a coach by the name of Mike Bathia and he's still at my high school to this day. And he was probably the Bobby Knight of basketball back then in high school sports. So like we'll yell at you, we'll curse at you, we'll damn near hit you upside the head. Totally different than what we could get away with today. But you know what it was? He just wanted to pull it out of you. Some people can really see something within you and they know that you're being really timid and they can't whip you, but they wanna like shake you. It's like the coach that grabs the face mask of the guy and says, you can do this, but I gotta yell. I just, you're messing up and I know you can succeed. At that given point in time, I got the opportunity to get a Division I scholarship to the University of Denver, signed that letter of intent, and then I was interviewed by the Seattle Times and something just came over me of like, okay, you already beat the odds. You're five foot nine, 155 pounds at the time, but I already beat these odds. I was a guy that was already dunking a basketball. I was already running a 4-3-4. I was a state 100 meter track athlete. I've already defeated a lot of odds, but I had to be real. Growing up in Seattle, you understand like what else is around you. You have basketball, but you also have Microsoft. You're seeing more millionaires come out of Microsoft than you're on the NBA. So just through repetition in my mind of always having something to carry you beyond athletics with academics and stuff, because that's my parents, you know, they always forced that on me. Always have something to fall back on, right? Still to this day, when I hear this, I'm like, man, I was prophetic. That was not for me, man. That was from source above. It was like, it was telling the truth. You may not be pro in basketball, but you're definitely gonna be pro at something. And I became that. You play video games at all? Yeah, a little bit. Mortal Kombat? Have you yeah, ever played back that? In the day, back yeah. in the day? Yeah. You know, as you go up the levels, who do you face? Yourself. Have to fight yourself. To beat the character, you're beating yourself. So that means you have to know everything about you to be better than you. Well, ultimately, the most difficult enemy that you're going to encounter is going to be yourself. Yeah. I think a lot of the time, I got this story about Winston Churchill. Churchill is showing a young MP around the Houses of Parliament. And this young MP is the bathrooms, and this is where we go for lunch, and this is whatever, whatever, right? And then it gets down into the House of Lords, and you've got the benches. This young guy who's probably full of himself and full of testosterone comes in and he starts gesturing at the other side, the other benches. He starts referring to them as the enemy. And Churchill turns to him and he says, that's the opposition, dear boy. The enemy's behind you. And this isn't literally what he meant, but figuratively, I think what he means is that your own worst enemy is always the one that is playing on your team. The person that's inside of your head knows your weaknesses. They know all of the buttons to push that yes. you wouldn't dare say to even your worst enemy. And you will consistently deploy that to you when you've tried your hardest, when you had noble intentions and fell short despite it not being your fault. And you are able to treat yourself like the worst piece of shit in a way that nobody else would. And if they did, they would be out of your life in a moment. 
So I think that, yes, seeing yourself as both your greatest potential fan and supporter mm -hmm. and also your worst potential enemy. And I agree. You have to expose the lies, expose all the lies that you tell yourself. Let's be clear. We have thousands and thousands of years of DNA stored within us. So some of those stories aren't yours. It could be your parents, could be grandparents, uncle, something. Expose those lies, man. I've learned now growing up that, okay, I am good enough. Why am I talking down to myself? Don't I want a championship moment? Don't I deserve that? And all I have to do is give myself permission to be me. And yeah, I may fail. But what drives me is that a lot of the time we're always, oh, what's my calling? And even in that moment on that stage, where I still remember the lady's name, her name is Margaret. She gave me permission to be me. Where are we giving ourselves permission to be our best version of self? You have to give yourself permission every day. You just woke up every day and then, first of all, you didn't even thank your body for putting up with your ass. So I should give myself permission and almost declare it every day. Like I declare that I'm gonna go out here and make a difference in my life. I declare that I'm gonna go do this cardio that I don't like. I declare that I'm gonna eat better. I declare that I'm actually going to look at my wife in the eye and tell her something sweet.